Okay, good evening everybody, um, and I'd like to welcome you all um, to Fitzwilliam College Debating Society. Now, as you all know, the motion before us tonight is um, whether meat is murder. Um, and it goes without saying that this is an issue of um, great controversy, and this is of course why we've decided to make it the opening debate of our programme this Lent term. Um, on behalf of the committee, I'd just like to thank you all uh, for taking the time to come to this debate. And a special thank you to our external debater, um, Joey, um, for, giving it, for giving up his time uh, to come. Um, and Joey's a well-known an animal liberation and vegan activist uh, with a YouTube channel that currently has um, in excess of 79,000 subscribers. Um, so just before we get into it, um, uh, we'll briefly just recap the rules of the structure of the debate that we, uh, we use here at FITS. Um, so all speakers will have seven minutes to speak with no interruptions from the audience. Um, after six minutes, I will knock um, just to signal that uh, the speaker has one minute left uh, to complete their speech. And after each speech, I will uh, briefly open the floor up to both the audience and uh, people um, on the panel um, to ask questions on that speech that they've just heard. And then from, following the speeches from all four speakers, um, we'll open up the floor more generally for a Q&A um, directed to, to, to all speakers. Um, and then at the end, we'll take a, a final vote on the motion. Um, so before we start, um, I'd just like to take an initial vote um, and try and gauge um, kind of opinion in the room. Um, so you have the option to abstain if you wish. Um, so could all those who support the motion, meet is murder, raise your hand. Okay, I'm just gonna say <laughs> that's 90% of the room. It's pretty yeah, split house, so thank you. Okay, we've got 80, 80 to 90% of the room. And then, could all those opposed now raise your hand? <laughs> okay, so that's 10. And any abstentions? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we've got about seven there. Okay. Um, now, um, I'll introduce our first speaker tonight, um, who's William Phelps, um, Chairman of KUKA um, and Exotic Meats Officer uh, for the Monday State Club, um, a campaign, a society to end meat-free Mondays um, in church or college. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Um, I just thought that before we sort of launch into the wider questions and implications, um, that are raised by the motion at hand, we need to cut through uh, some, I'd say, intellectual dishonesty uh, which surrounds the whole motion and debate as to whether meat is murder. What we commonly hear surrounding the whole meat is murder and indeed just the wider vegan discussion are points made about free lifestyle choices, the environment, animal welfare, and um, the capacity for animal sentience, and so on and so forth. Now, what I will say very openly and very freely is that these all hold individual merit. And I think they can all be discussed individually, and I would argue all, um, all constitute a, a quite a separate discussion. But separate to those, and I'd say obviously, well, indeed, it's what we're discussing this evening, we need to ask ourselves, is meat murder? Not merely immoral, not merely something to be prevented, to be cut down on, to be, say, reviewed, but is it murder? Now, the first question is, well, what do we mean by um, murder? It's a term which is commonly employed. You know, we always have the, the slogan, meat is murder, the T-shirts, meat is murder, and so on and so forth. But what do we really mean when we say um, murder? Uh, now, in a very basic sense, now, forgive me, um, I've used the OED, not the Superior Cambridge um, English Dictionary, uh, which says that murder is unlawful, uh, premeditated killing of one human being um, to another. Uh, now, we have to ask ourselves, why is it that uh, the dictionary and, indeed, the legal definition says one human being to another. And the reason I would say is, is, is one which underpins society, as we know, civil society, civil democracy, um, is that society is something you participate in. You take things from society, you receive certain rights. You receive legislative protection for murder, for example, as we've just shown, and you give certain things in return, such as tax. And all of this is underscored by a basic belief in equality before law. And this is the crux of the argument. It's about equality, right? So all of these discussions of meat, is it environmentally friendly? What about animal welfare? Um, what about the sentience of animals? They, I would say, dodge the point slightly because it's radical equality is really what we're talking about here this evening. And in order to propose that meat is murder, therefore, you need to say that 
there is radical equality and we must have radical equality and that actually we should reduce the status of the human to that of the animal and we must compare the animal and the human on equal footing and on equal terms. They are completely equal and we must therefore afford them equal rights because murder, if we are to judge it in the social sense, we must therefore be legal about it and we must say that in order to, you know, if I were to kill a human, it's murder and if I were to kill an animal, it's murder. We must, we must grant equality. But to any person of sound mind, I, I, I would say that this, I think, is, is ridiculous. I mean, on the, first, on the one hand, we have the implications of such a view. If we're going to afford legal equality to animals, I mean, what other um, social equalities must you afford them? Should animals pay tax? Should they be able to vote? Should they indeed go to prison and be able to own property? And you may laugh, you may say, oh, this is reductionist. But really, this is the sort of logic you open yourself up to when you use such extreme terms such as murder. When you say, oh, to eat meat is murder because that is really what lies at the core of the issue. And furthermore, if I were to hit a rabbit with my car, should I go to prison for manslaughter? If I were to go rabbiting, for example, as, as any rural man is wont to do, um, should I be tried for murder? If we introduce this idea that meat is murder and that animals are radically equal in America, should I face the death penalty for shooting a rabbit? And again, I, th I think to most people of sound mind, the answer is no. And why is that? I'd say on the one hand, it's because as humans, as sort of brethren in species, we know that there is a certain quality to us that is, I would argue, more complex, um, that is a certain set of emotions, of desires, and a worldview which animals simply don't have. We are a separate species. And I think taking this into account, combined with the very troubling implications of such radical absolutism, the view that, for example, the death of an infant child is to be held equal to the death of a goat, raises serious questions. So what I would argue at its core is, you know, I'm not going to criticise the vegan choice. I'm not going to criticise concerns for animal welfare, concerns about the environment, concerns about the harmful health effects of meat. They're all completely valid and I think deserve discussion. But to suggest that meat is murder, and to take the implications of that and say, well, look, we should afford radical equality to animals, is simply not a sustainable view to take. The implications are dangerous, and I would argue it actually denigrates both the status of man and animals in society. So I would, fully, I would fully support and encourage concern about animal welfare, concern about animal rights, concern about the environment and about health. But declaring meat as murder, I would say, is not the right way to do it. And for that reason, I would urge you to oppose the motion. Thank you. Um, and we'll briefly take a few questions from the audience. There, yeah, Eric at the back. So at one point um, you suggested that uh, you asked rhetorically, should we give uh, animals voting rights, should we send them to prison? So I think we'd all agree that the killing of, what, say, a one-year-old child would be murder. But we don't give uh, babies the responsibilities of citizens, we don't uh, send them to prison, we don't ask them to vote. There's no reason that... Um, Respect for something for a right to life implies responsibility as a citizen. No, I, I think that that's obviously a valid point. Um, I'll stand back up. Odd comparison to make. No, no, it, it, yes, yeah, it, but it, it's a valid one nonetheless. And what I would say is that do we believe that babies have the same capabilities and abilities that an adult man has? Would we trust a baby to vote? Would we trust a baby to drive a car? Would we trust a baby to carry firearms? The answer is no. And the reason the answer is no is not because we believe that babies are inferior or um, of a completely lower status. It's because we recognise that we are different as grown people, different to them. In the same way that I would argue, we must recognise, in virtue of being humans, that we are different to animals and therefore must treat them differently, not in a, in a notion of radical equality. I've got a question. What is that difference? What is the morally significant difference between an infant baby and a lamb, like you suggested, that gives us justification to stab a lamb in the neck with a knife, take their life from them, and for some reason, killing that baby child, that human child, would be considered murder. But there must be some morally significant difference as to why it's not considered murder to take the life of that lamb. Now, I, the whole moral discussion, it's a big one, and I think we could go on at length, but what I would ask in return, and I think this sums up the issue, is you must ask yourself, would you, would you feel as comfortable killing an infant child as you would a goat. 
Well, to I which the answer I would an, hope is sorry, it, it is question and answer. Uh, okay. to, 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 there will be yeah, other people. Okay. Want there'll to be an option at the end. Okay. To which the answer I would hope is no. Okay. Now, I mean, I try, I try to be, as, uh, I try not to be intu intuitive and, and intuitionist when it comes to morality. But I, I think the fact there is that block in the first place suggests that there is something of a, of a hierarchy of treatment. Um, I mean, it's difficult in what you say because if you take like the, the massacre in Rwanda mm. and things like that, I wasn't there, so I didn't experience. But it became very easy for a human to kill another human because they weren't of the right type. And it sounds a lot of what you say is, I could imagine a slave master talking about why they, those group of people don't have any rights. Even though they were human beings, they, they were different and rightless. And it just seems that, okay, that was then, but we're now. And we do understand that there are beings that can experience joy and happiness and a sense of freedom, um, the desire to, to, to be a, um, a parent to the, to the lamb or, or whatever, or, you know, or the lamb to... To, to, to dance, you know. Mm. Um, so it's very subjective, your view. You know, you have your cultural belief that it's okay, you were brought up that it's okay to, to have killed animal on your plate, I was brought up that way. Um, but as you become aware, then of course your morality can change because it's an awareness, it's a subjective point of view. No, of course, and I think you know cultural um, cultural relativism is will always uh, play, a, play a part in these discussions, but equally, if you're arguing that, that morality is completely subjective, you could say, well, you know, maybe tomorrow um, or in 100 years' time, our morality will shift to the point where we have, we're slaughtering, slaughtering 10 times the animals we need and, and we um, are effectively em employing the, the meat industry on steroids. I think that relativism is, is it's not a, I, I wouldn't use it as a base to, base to, to contravene what I'm saying as such. I, but I, I think in response to the idea that, um, you know, maybe animals do have this sentence which we don't appreciate, I think that's fair enough, uh, but in virtue of, of um, having sort of a being brethren in species and appreciating our wants and our needs and um, indeed not just the needs of those in the West but the needs of those in the East as well who are poorer, um, are poorer societies, can't afford the replacements that are often um, espoused, you know, sort of different types of milk and so forth, um, we do need to take into account, I would say, that there are certain arbitrary lines that need to be drawn, um, that there are certain things we can do. Uh, or indeed should be able to do to animals. And I think perhaps then it becomes more an issue of how do we treat the animals and how do we take them through that process. Um, but obviously, no, it's a, it's a valid point. OK, well, I'll take one more question from the audience, then we'll move on. Uh, Joe at the back. Sorry, um, your, your argument for saying that um, killing a human is murder and killing an animal isn't it? Should we rest on some kind of difference in properties between those two things, meaning that one... In one case, the killing forgets murder, and the other, the killing doesn't forget murder. I, I don't think it doesn't seem like you quite outlined what exactly that difference is. Sounds like it's you. Um, I mean, I, I think we need to appreciate what, what murder is, and what the law is, and what these terms are. They are legislative properties which are imparted by a society encoding them into law. And so, in order for me to commit murder or to steal something, we need to have certain legal beliefs. And as I sort of outlined very roughly, admittedly, and I'm sure any HSPS student will, will, will tear me to pieces for it, um, is effectively the view of how society works, and that society is by participation, and with that, you receive certain protections. Um, and so I would say for that reason, I can murder a human, but I cannot murder an animal. Because those, that sort of legal franchisement, that legal protection is not extended to animals. And the only way it could be is by granting them the sort of equality and the sort of recognition, which, um, as I as proved, is actually very, very dangerous. And so if you do respect the rights of humans and animals as different and having different needs and different <coughs> properties and different wants and so on and so forth, um, you cannot therefore classify it as murder. Okay. Unfortunately, we'll have to move on. Um, if you have any further questions, you can, of course, ask them at the end. Um, now, that being said, I'd like to introduce our second speaker, um, Louise Harris, who's a third-year student here at FITS. OK, so is meat murder? The Oxford Dictionary definition as Will has just said, is the unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another. Clearly, if we were to use this definition, meat wouldn't be murder, because meat in the context of this debate is the flesh of a non-human animal. But the question is, why is murder wrong? What is it about murder that's morally wrong? It's the deliberate and needless taking of a sentient being's life against its will. So that will be the defini definition I use today, and I'll be showing you how meat fulfills every one of those categories. It's needless, it's the deliberate killing of a sentient being and against their will. So point one, meat is murder because non-human animals who are killed for their meat are sentient. 
Sentience is the capacity to feel, perceive, or experience subjectively. So that involves feeling pain, emotions, having awareness of your surroundings, and so on. There is consensus among scientists that non-human animals have sentience. In 2012, an international group of prominent scientists signed the Cambridge, so right here, Declaration on Consciousness, in which they proclaimed their support for the idea that animals are conscious and aware to the degree that humans are, the same degree. And that list of animals was, in, was all mammals, birds, and even the octopus. So, and they also acknowledge that um, consciousness can emerge in animals which are actually very unlike humans, including those that evolved from you know, different evolutionary tracks. So therefore, we are not unique in possessing neurological substrates that generate consciousness. So, if non-human animals are conscious, are conscious, they're sentient, just like us, why does it mean, what's the difference between taking their life and taking our life? As you said, um, you wanted to separate animal sentience from this discussion, but if a human wasn't sentient, then would we consider it murder? Sentience is kind of key to this, to this debate. So some examples of sentience for non-human farm animals who are killed for their meat. So sheep can recognise up to 50 other sheep's faces, remember it for two years. Cows show excitement when they discover how to open a gate leading to a food reward. Lame meat chickens choose to eat food which contains a painkiller. They feel pain, emotions perceive and are aware. They are experienced objectively. And it can be argued, so it's not just murder meat, taking the life of a sentient being, but it's worse because the meat industry is a lifelong suffering for these animals. And that's because generally factory farming accounts for the vast majority of global meat production. For example, just in the US, factory farms raise 99.9% .9 of chickens for meat. So in factory farms, these animals are confined in tiny enclosures or cages. Chickens, for example, have less than an A4 page amount of space. They can't move. They are um, pumped with hormones or antibiotics. Chickens have their beaks trimmed without an aesthetic at day one of age. Many attack each other or eat each other due to the stress of being kept in confined conditions. Um, and even the process of slaughter can involve suffering. So. For example, gas chambers. These um, are in the UK, Australia, m multiple countries. Footage shows pigs screaming and thrashing as they gasp for air inside the gas chambers in an Australian, um, the biggest pig abattoir in Australia. That was uh, video footage. Um, and constantly, um, people who go into factory farms to film the slaughtering process have found that actually the law, which you say is so important, has been broken in so many cases. Um, animals are being kicked, slapped, stamped on, um, improperly stunned, and many of them actually aren't uh, sufficiently stunned, so they are conscious when they are killed. Um, so, as you say, they will be hacked in the throat whilst they're conscious. So it's not just um, murder, it's not just death, but it's also lifelong suffering, and because they are sentient, it means it's, it's wrong. Um, point two, so even if the animal, let's say, is stunned sufficiently, so they're unconscious when they're killed, the idea that this is somehow humane is ludicrous. What's humane about ending a sentient being's life against their will when they want to survive? Do they not have a right to life? Well, let's take a dog. We love dogs. Who here has liked the Facebook page Dog Spotting? Raise your hands if you have. Okay. And who's liked Cow Spotting or Pig Spotting? Okay. So even, even a small number of people, there's still a difference. Why is there a difference? That's because how we view them. Cows and pigs and sheep, then then maybe not as cute or fluffy. They're not publicised in the media as being funny or smart because we are conditioned to believe they're products, not individuals with identities. But research shows, again, they're not just as sentient. Pigs are smarter than three-year-old humans. They can play video games. They're just as smart as your cat or dog. But they taste good. Let's say your dead dog tastes like chicken. Would you eat it? Probably not, right? Um, you know, people in the UK will sign petitions against the dog meat trade in China. But research, you know, research reveals that one of the reasons is because we see pets to have complex minds like us. And once we are, we are made aware through education that farm animals have these complex minds, have sentience, then what is the difference? Why is killing a dog murder, in, you know, most people's view, um, in Western society, or, and why is, so then why is killing a farm animal uh, not murder? So I don't see the difference there. Okay, point three, um, meat is murder because the killing of animals for meat is needless in most of current society. So if, you know, some people try and compare our uh, meat consumption to a lion hunting, there's, you know, not just one difference there, but one main one is that a lion's body is designed for meat. They're a carnivore. They don't have digestive systems to digest plant food, but we do. If they don't hunt that meat for survival, they will die. We will not. 
in our case, um, it's not a matter of whether we need meat, it's more greed. We do it because it tastes good, it's traditional culture. I'm not saying that everyone in the world, in every situation, it is murder. You know, if there's um, someone in a rural village in a third world country, they have the only food source available to them is meat. Um, or that's the only kind of, that's their only way to survive. Then can you see it as needless? So, but when we're looking at the context of meat in our society, um, the majority um, of meat consumption is by first world countries and we simply just do not need meat to survive. It's a luxury. If we wouldn't um, support ivory trade or trophy hunting, which are fun activities or luxury products, why would we support the meat trade? And finally, um, you, used, you made the point that clearly murder is to do with humans. And meat isn't just the murder of farm animals, but also humans. This is because the meat industry can be seen to perpetuate world hunger. So recent studies have shown that we already grow enough edible crops to feed not only the current human population, but the one projected for 2050. But that requires us to go vegan. That's because the plants that we're growing are going, 34% of those are going to animals. They could be going to humans and they wouldn't be starving um, and dying. So it's murder for us as well. Thank you. Okay, so firstly, any questions from the audience? They're just the hand at the back there. Uh, yes, yeah, I would just like to ask, um, if you are opposed to um, the killing of sentient, um, of sent um, of sentient creatures when, um, you know, it's not necessary, you know, for example, to save someone's life, um, what's your opinion on abortion when the woman's life is not in danger? When the woman's life is not in danger? Yeah. Okay, abort... I see, what, I see the similarities you're making because it's the taking of a life of a sentient being, but here it's a lot more complex issue. If that woman, you know, if that woman isn't ready to have a child or can't, you know, there's a, a lot of complex issues there. It's interfering with her own well-being. And whereas, like, whether you're eating meat or not is not going to interfere with your life in any actually tangible manner. So it's like clearly needless. Um, no, I'm just slightly, slightly curious as to, I'm just slightly curious as to the, the, the way you're addressing murder, because you said that if you know there was a, a, a villager in an under, underdeveloped country who ate meat, that wouldn't be murder, and that murder is apparently now defined as needless waste. Surely that firstly doesn't accord with the definition you gave at the beginning, and secondly is just you saying this is murder, and therefore I'm going to classify needless waste, but not um, an underdeveloped um, nation village consuming meat as murder, because if you want to be logically consistent, shouldn't you say that all meat consumption is, is therefore murder, because animals should therefore be equal? Well, my definition is that it is, like, meat is murder because it is needless, right? So, like, to me, if, if two people, on, two humans are on a, in a desert island, um, and in order for one of them to survive, they have to kill the other, to me, that just isn't murder, because it's like, it's not, okay. they're doing it out of a need to survive. You might define that differently I've got a different view on that yeah I, I don't think it's I think there's more of a reason but I don't think it's morally justified if you and I were on a desert island and, and I killed you to survive I didn't need to do that I mean we're both as sentient as each other and we both have you know I think that's still murder personally but and I don't think that some I, th I, I don't think there is it's always murder for me I think it's to be consistent across the board um, animal products in third world countries are a luxury so to say, like, rice is less accessible than, you know, a sheep, maybe some hunting scenario, but for me, it's not moral. They might have more of a reason, more of a justification there than you do over here, but yeah. Okay, any further questions before we move on? Yeah, Louise. Um, we're talking about meat as um, when we kill, for example, sheep yeah. or, well, cattle, uh, but what's your take on insects, for example? If we eat an insect, is that is murder? Is that mean? So scientific research as uh, on sentience is consensus about uh, sorry consensus about the sentience of like mammals and birds. Um, as far as I'm aware, like the research on insects is inconclusive. Um, but I mean, in my in my view, it's always best to give like the benefit of doubt. The benefit of the doubt. You, if you don't know if something's sentient, you should you know you should prioritize trying to avoid. Um, eating what's kind of most sentient or you, that's you know is sentient. 
Okay, um, I'd like to introduce um, the second speaker uh, for the opposition, Patrick Nutton, um, third year student here at FITS and also president of the Debating Society. Hello everyone. It is a pleasure to be here tonight, honestly, to see so many of you here at an event. Um, yeah, it's great. And I'd like to thank everyone who's made tonight possible. Now, in all honesty, my position in this debate is far closer to Joey and Louise than it is to my partner, and I hope that he has appealed to those of you in this room who share his views, but I do not. Um, I think that the meat industry, as it is, is murderous. And I agree with everything that Louise has said on the horrors of the meat industry, as she has called out battery farming, etc. But my speech is not here to argue with that. I'm going to be explaining how meat and the direction it is going actually is moving from being murderous to not murderous and is the way to move forward into a future where meat isn't murder. The most effective way to do that is to vote that meat isn't murder. And that's for one very simple reason. We live in an age of developing technology where cultured meat is becoming cheaper and more productive by the year. The first cultured hamburger was produced in 2013, and over the last few years it has become a cheaper and more available food source. It is still a luxury product, but if the history has taught us anything, it is that technologies get cheaper, they get faster, they get more effective. So let me be clear, the meat industry as it is, is murderous, but the future of meat and the direction it is going disconnects the product of meat from an act where you must kill a being. This is a huge disconnect in the argument, where the meat industry as it is now is murderous, but the future of meat is not. Now, there are plenty of you here who are very aware of the horrors of the meat industry. I'm sure that the opening vote has made that very clear alongside the arguments of Louise and Joey. But there are plenty more who are not at this debate. And people like my partner, who will never be convinced by the argument of go vegan, who will retain eating meat to the day they die out of stubbornness. I'm sure those of you who are involved in <laughs> vegan organisations are aware of these people and have come across them, right? What is the way to win them over? What is the way to convince those people to stop murdering animals? It is to transform meat itself. It is to change the underpinnings of their debate and to move meat away from when it is murderous to when it is not through changing technology and a transforming world. Therefore, I urge you that when you leave here tonight, you argue that meat is not murder, not just because you know meat tastes nice or they're not really human or battery farming doesn't matter because you know they're chickens or whatever. I urge you, argue that meat isn't murder because of a changing world which disconnects meat from the killing of a sentient being, and that means that we can convince those who are, are never going to stop eating meat that they do not have to kill to get their fix. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Right, we'll go with the gentleman at the back. Um, so meat is is uh, using regenerative in the sort of the lab growth is using regenerative regenerative words regenerative techniques similar to stem cell research to grow exactly the same um, compounds as you would get in a, in a live animal um, in a lab. So the process of it is actually incredibly similar to the process of vertical farming, in that you grow. Um, in a lab or in a factory um, uh, using uh, um, scientific methods, um, a product that does not involve a live animal that is ever sentient. So I, I think that falls quite clearly under the definition of meat. Do you agree? But animal-based cells. Sorry, um, it's one at a time. So if you have a question, yeah, no please question. raise your hand and he will call you one by one. Okay, we we'll go with the lady at the back. Um, how many people here have had or cultured meat? Because as far as I'm aware, like, the most of the meat here is, like, is all animal mm. slaughter. Yes, yes. Um, so I agree yeah. that we are moving forward to growing it in yeah. lab. Right 
now in the yes. time I think he is murdered. Okay. Um, mm. I, I was just curious if like maybe you yourself have had mm, I've not, um but it is growing and it is kind of it's one of those kind of weird, trendy niche restaurant things. Um but what what I would say is a reason that I would say, I, I would agree with you that the majority of meat as it is now is murder. But let's not sell the principle, because once we sell the principle, it, it's much harder to convince the people who are never going to convert. Right? Um, I, I'd say that if you want, uh, let's keep the debate open. Let's say that meat isn't murder when there is a technology which we can pursue to win over meat eaters um, to a product which doesn't harm animals. Um, does that sound like a fair response to you? It, it does, but that's like in the future. If it's right now, what we can do right now is to... Mm, I, what we can do right now and what is happening right now are different. So cultured meat exists and it separates the principles of meat being murder versus the majority of what is happening. Um, so, so there are clear examples in the world today where meat isn't murder. Um, so so the, the principle is kind of hard to sell. And I would say that if you sell that meat is murder as a principle today, it becomes much harder to convince people who are, who are never going to move off meat to, to move on to the, the alternative so, um, of meat which is grown in labs. Um, thank you. Can we take two more questions? Um, there's just the lady at the back. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, well, earlier I kind of got the impression that the fact that killing the animal was part of it in the sense that you... Um, the guy in the pink shirt was saying how it's kind of like a assertion of human superiority and I wonder how you would feel about lab grown meat knowing that it's not asserting that authority anymore is that putting animals equal to humans and how do you feel about that because I don't think lab grown meat would satisfy all meat eaters because as, as you were saying before, it's the fact that you seem to want to feel superior. Um, this is more a question for you than it is for me. Shall I? Am I right? Yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah, no, sure. Um, yeah, no, so a, a few things there. Um, the, the first, with regards to human superiority in that point, it's less a, a want to feel superior, it's more, I would argue, um, a social necessity. Uh, purely due to the implications that arise when we start judging animals to be completely equal. I mean, as I said, if we want to have a logically coherent society, um, we would have to grant them rights, which, with the example of a baby, um, shows we just can't feasibly do. So it's, it's less about want. Um, and with regards to, uh, to um, lab-grown meat, uh, I, I much prefer the real thing myself. Um, I've never had lab-grown meat. Um, so the way that sort of satisfies the, the whole superiority... Um, discussion I, I'm again I'm slightly confused to thrust the question there um, but what I would say is that uh, to declare it as murder um, taking into in, in, into account the points about lab grown meat um, is effectively a, a, a not only a baseless rejection of meat if you do have hope for lab grown meat in the future um, as has been said but also linking back to the early point quite a, a dangerous approach to take um, if we are to have a society in which humans can flourish and animals can be treated as, um, as, as separate beings, but with their own rights in turn. OK, we'll have one more question, and then we'll move on to Joey. Um, the gentleman in the hat. Back to the gentleman on my far right. Uh, are you not asking us to answer two questions in one vote-taking? Uh, there's a question of whether animal-based meat is murder versus cell-cultured-based meat. I mean, the question... very different. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think if the debate was, um, is animal meat murder... I'd be, it'd be a, I wouldn't be on this side of the argument, right? I'm just saying let's not, let's not sell the principle um, wh because this question has to include both. It has to include the potential for a future when, me, when uh, as this technology takes off and becomes more mainstream, people are able to eat um, uh, more widely available a meat that clearly isn't murderous. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's a really good point. What, what I would say is um, don't go out of this room and don't vote against the principle of meat. Cast your vote against the current state of the meat industry and its abominable practices. Um, so, yeah, so they are two different that questions. Would mean for this side. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Because it would mean, because if you do that, you vote, um, you vote that meat is murder. It, you, would, you would be cutting off an option which allows the future of meat to, to be separate from murder. 
But that's not the question in front of us, is it? Sorry. Okay, but I've one more question, and then we've got to, we have to move on after. I mean, there is a distinction with with oat milk and plant-based milks, not to be called milks mm -hmm. and, and cheeses and yogurts, because the dairy industry in the U.S. and Europe said milk has to come from a from a, an animal. And I have a feeling that you're optimistic that cellular-based lab meat will have the same right because it comes from animal genes. But you don't know. The industry may say. They may see it as a threat to their market and their industry and, and want it differentiated and, and then class it not as meat. So I think you are... Um, so you know, it could be class. Okay, let's see, let's see what the future holds um, and, and what classifications fall into place as the tech, tech grows. Um, but at the moment, lab-grown meat is meat. It occupies the exact same cellular structure. It has been able to replicate tastes it has exactly the same um, kind of, you know, resting um, principles. What differentiates it is cost and production. And lack of consciousness. Yes, and lack of consciousness, which is exactly why you should vote that meat isn't murder, because it's that key separating degree. Um, so th this is a meat which results in people, in, in beings not being murdered. So doesn't that prove the point? OK, we're going to have to move on. Um, and finally, I'd like to introduce our fourth speaker, uh, Joey Carbstrong, vegan activist. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your interesting positions and ideas. So the first thing we've got to get off the table is the word murder, because really this is a play on words, isn't it? Like, the word murder bears weight. And Will over here uh, said that the most used definition, but not the only definition, is the unlawful premeditated killing of one human by another. Don't you worry, I hear it all the time. Probably hear it five times a week by people defending uh, their meat eating. But that's not the only definition. So if you're gonna go into the dictionary to use definitions of words, there are many non-anthropocentric definitions of the word murder. So, Collins Dictionary has to kill brutally to kill inhumanely or barbarously, and you could, we, we can't deny that robbing someone of their sentience can never be humane. I mean, unless they are suffering, or, you know, we, we make them suffer, <laughs> and then we rob them of their sentience, or we keep them in these happy farms, and then we rob them of their sentience. So, I, I think that fits perfectly what we do to animals. Uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, uh, to slaughter wantingly. Um, so these definitions are all up there online. These all apply to animals. So just based on, on semantics alone, based on the definition alone, uh, meat is murder. Meat, a product of murder. Um, now, I get into these semantics battles a lot. Is um, artificially inseminating a cow rape? Is, you know, subjugating sentient animals slavery? Is shooting an animal in the head without moral justification, murder. I don't think there's a uh, you know, significant moral difference between animals and human beings. Now you might say, well, that, that justifies us you know, killing them against their will for an unnecessary reason with, with, and, and an unjustified reason. So you might say, well, you know, we are superior. We, we, we're obviously more intelligent. Animals don't have iPhones. And I'm like, you know, they, they can't you know, they can't vote in court, but so can't certain humans. Some certain humans are born with what? A, a, a mental disability. Do we treat them in a way that, you know, uh, breaches their right? Of course we don't. Of course we don't. A uh, human baby. Now you said, oh, should we assign a human baby rights? Uh, uh, human baby rights. Humans, but human, human babies have fundamental rights protecting them. Protecting their, their liberty, their freedom, protecting them from abuse. You touch a child, where do you go? Prison. Okay, so they have rights. And you say like, no, we can't equate babies with animals. Well, well a pig, higher sentience, higher in intelligence, the fourth most intelligent animal on earth. Okay, just before chimpanzees. And what's the next one? Well, they're the fourth. Really, really intelligent beings. I mean, you could argue that a, you know, a human baby, it's just nothing more than you know, a dribbling, you know, they're, they're just, they don't really have much to offer the world. Okay, but we would never rob them of their sentience. We'd never abuse them. We have, they have fundamental rights protecting them. 
the right to drive a car, get a license and to vote. I mean, some humans don't even, aren't even assigned those rights. I'm talking about fundamental rights of liberty, bodily integrity, the right to live, the right not to be enslaved and subjugated and murdered. Um, Cambridge Declaration of Consciousness. Wow, it was signed right here. Okay. Now, no one's going to argue that animals aren't sentient. I don't think anyone in the scientific community of any merit thinks animals are not sentient. Or, and, uh, well, uh, I mean, it's quite obvious that they are. There's someone inside of there. Someone with wants, desires, and needs. Someone who wants to avoid, you know, pain. They have the desire for well-being. So, what is the difference <laughs> between us and animals? Where we, we feel like we're morally justified to, you know, subjugate them, to steal their children from them, to put them inside of gas chambers, rip the flesh off of their bones, stick knives into their throats. What is the difference, the morally significant difference between them? Okay, because we could argue there are humans of, you know, if you believe in sentience hierarchy, lower, lower sentience than animals, contribute less to society than animals could, but we'd never rob them of their rights. So I think um, legality and morality get conflated and mixed up and confused. What's legal isn't always moral. I mean, just look 200 years in the past to see that slavery was once legal, it wasn't moral. And I would argue that there is no morally significant difference between us and animals that justifies killing them. And for that reason, I think to murder a human is just as morally unjustified as mur murdering an animal. Okay? And I think we should assign animals rights. Just, just basic rights. The right not to be treated, just what actually, I just asked for one right. The right not to be treated as property, as someone else's, as a product, okay? That's all I would assign them. You know, you don't have to get, give them a license and stuff like that, I understand that. So, there's also a crime by law called murder by proxy. It's not where you, you with a knife kill the animal yourself or you with a knife kill a human yourself. You assign others to do the job for you. Murder by proxy. Charles Manson, famous serial killer, was charged with murder by proxy. He got life in prison. Okay. When we purchase animal products, it's not us putting the knife in the animal's throat, but it's murder by proxy. Secondhand murder. Um, so I feel like you didn't really answer the question, Will, about what is the difference between animals and humans that justifies a knife in the animal's throat but mor uh, moral treatment of human beings. And I'm, I'm happy to, to bang out what that difference is and we can apply that in the animal context and see if it justifies stabbing them. But also, um, you threw us a curveball, Patrick, with the cultured meat idea. I think we focus on the three trillion animals that are murdered annually for flesh and not the three companies that are bringing out prototypes for cultured meat when we have thousands of plant-based options already. But, you know, we could, we could also argue that the meat inside a coconut is also meat and that that's not murder too. Um, you know, but I think for the you know, benefit of this debate, meat is definitely 100% just as murderous as shooting a human child in the head, in, in my, my opinion. opinion. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to just open up the floor um, specifically for Joey's speech and then we'll open up the floor more widely. So, Lauren. With pets, uh, with pets, uh, we are in a bit of a pickle with uh, domestication. Domestication is a problem that human beings created, okay? We created that problem and you know what the alternative is to rescuing those animals, which veg it's the most vegan thing we can do is rescue animals from shelters. They get a needle in the arm and they go, you know, uh, they get killed, they get euthanized, or sometimes they're gas chambered. So the most moral thing for us to do is to control them from breeding so we, don't, we have less, less of this problem and rescue them from shelters without otherwise be killed. Okay, we can't let animals free, domesticated animals free in society because they get collected by the RSPCA and taken to a shelter and if they're not, you know, rescued by someone, they're killed. So we have no option with that. Um, but is meat murder? Yes. Is the, the flesh of a dog murder? 
Yes. Um, just just a sort of building on what I last asked, just so we're one hundred percent sure of what we're dealing with here. And it's a very simple yes, no question. Um, would you feel the same way about killing a baby as you would a chicken? Just just sort of binary yes, no. Would I feel the same way? As in, if you had to kill a chicken and a, a human my baby. My feelings on on just killing. Yes or no? Would you feel the same way about? Well, that? my feelings on killing. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes, but my feelings on. Deep, right. Yeah, I would. Yeah. But my feelings on killing a, a human baby and a chicken have got nothing to do with the morality of it. So you kill a baby as easily as so, you would a chicken. But my my feelings on the topic have got nothing right. to do with it. Okay. Noted. So so. Yeah, yeah. No, fair enough. But yeah, we got it. Well, well, no, I can enough, throw that right. back at you. That's all right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So for you as well, the same that you asked him. Yeah. So if you know about the atrocities of the animal agriculture, you yeah. say yourself that you still prefer the real thing, as you said. Yeah. And so, so knowing how badly the animals are treated, knowing that the animals suffer when they die, knowing the, con the Im environmental impact on it, what is your justification for carrying on doing it? Well, I, I think... That's a separate question to the idea of meat as murder, because but as I said before... Oh, I mean, no, fair enough, because actually, before this evening, I, I honestly didn't think that there were people who could say, I could kill a human infant child as easy as I could a chicken. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. That's a straw man. No, no, no. That's a straw man. I remind okay, sorry, people that I, I it's Q&A, please. So, sorry, I, I might have, no, no, sorry, I obviously misheard it. But I mean, the, the, point, the point is, is that um, there is a qualitative difference, quite frankly. And that actually humans, I think, in, in, as we can all see, and I, I would say probably intuitively feel, um, have a certain level of sentient complexity, which is above and beyond. Um, mm. Not all humans. Not all humans, though. Please. Sorry, please, can I, please. to be clear, this is uh, Joey's Q&A, so ask him questions. Yeah. You'll have more chance to argue yeah. with him yes, no, come soon, back to me. don't do, worry. Do. <laughs> so we'll take two more questions directly for Joey, and then we'll open up the floor more generally. So, um, yeah, just the hand there, I can't see. Just here. <laughs> A controlling of animals breeding the thing if if we would not hold a double standard if there was a problem like that for human beings okay so if there was a problem that was um, uncontrollable like what's happening to uh, domesticated animals what's this what's the alternative the alternative to not controlling their breeding is they get murdered in a shelter so this is the most vegan option we have but is meat murder Yes, so I feel like this isn't even on topic, but it's fine, we can go out into this moral grey area. But for me, and other vegans, the most vegan and moral thing we can do is rescue these animals and control their breeding. Otherwise, what, what do we do if we just let them lead them to the devices and let them breed more puppies into existence? There's more numbers and guess what? More pigs, uh, more uh, cows, uh, sorry, dogs, pigs, cows, they're all the same to me, you see. <laughs> no speciesism here. <laughs> more dogs are going to get um, killed in gas chambers and yeah. But is dog meat murder? Yes. Is cow meat murder? Yes. Is pig meat murder? Yes. Also, um, there are differences between humans and animals, okay? There are, but what is the difference that justifies us stabbing cows in the throat and not human beings? What is the morally significant difference? Yes, there's differences in sentience, you know, maybe this uh, elephant's more sentient than a, a mouse, okay? But does that mean we should, you know, walk up to a mouse and step on them, kill them? What is the, what is the difference? That morally justifies us stabbing cows, but not an infant child, but not some uh, human being of lower sentience or intelligence, which there are plenty of them. We treat them morally and we assign them rights. What is the difference? It's a double standard. Okay, I'm gonna take one more question and then we'll open it up fully. So, any new hands? Okay, we'll go Joe at the back. Okay, um, I feel like my point is almost kind of rather has a small scope compared to all the grand moral arguments, but to me at least, um, in my kind of semantic and syntactic interpretation, the phrase meat and bird seems to be a uh, one on principle, wherein any instance of meat falls into the set of things which are murder. So I, 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 I would actually make a lot, you know, very, very, very significant moral points and arguments which are more sophisticated than the ones that I'm positing. But it would just be that um, what you've established there seems to be that animal meat is murder, which is, yeah, he's very, is a but that's not the same as saying that um, all meat on principle is murder, which is, I think, um, you know, Patrick gave uh, an example where in something falls into category of meat, but not as murder. And I think that in, in this scenario, though I think you 
haven't said anything wrong at all. I would I'd say that it's, it doesn't, for me at least, yeah. and you might have a different interpretation of what emotion is, um, it doesn't uh, prove the principle of Peter's murder. It proves the principle of the killing of animals. Yes, exactly. Joe, would you like Can you repeat that question? <laughs> where does the where does the word meat originate from? And you know, I, I think like you look, know, we've got plant based meat alternatives too that you could call meat, and we call uh, the plant based alternatives chicken. But are they you know are they directly murdering a chicken? No, you know, but um, you know, like coconut meat, you know, that is that murder? No, you know, and cultured meat if they don't. It, exploit an animal, uh, you know, they might take a, a cell and create an infinite amount of chicken flesh and didn't murder anyone in the process. Is that murder? No, I'm not going to argue that that is murder. But I think for the three trillion animals that are stabbed and have the flesh ripped off their bones, that meat, the three trillion a year, you know, a conservative estimate, 2.7 million uh, trillion marine animals. And yes, my friend. Can we uh, take, yeah. um, Sorry, should we take two votes at the end of this then? Then yeah, um, is meat murder the topic that was actually placed before, and then is animal meat murder, which is exactly what you have argued, and everyone in this room probably agrees with? Should we take two votes? <laughs> no, I was. Um, I mean, I, I think. Well, at least I, I think we all went into it uh, into this debate saying it is meat as we commonly understand it, murder. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's a bit so, of a curveball. I mean, have we want to take it? I'll, I'll leave it to the powers that be, but. No, I'm, I'm just making this fun. I guess it's semantic. Obviously, we're going to take one vote, but they are two very different topics, aren't they? Well, we could say, is milk um, exploitation of a cow? And you could say, well, well, what about coconut milk? You know, what about oat milk? And the debate's finished. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I mean, okay, so we'll clever, but yeah. Gentlemen at the back. Oh, sorry, just to interrupt you, um, could you say who you are directing the question to, if you, if you are directing the question to someone. If you are directing a question to someone. You've got one question because we've got a lot of people to get yeah. through. Evidence. Where is your evidence of that animals can't hope or desire or want or avoid pain and suffering? And avoiding pain is something that plants do. It's a well, reaction. we do. Hope is not like love. Hope is a complex emotion that requires something more thought out than personally. Well, well, I don't know. If there's suffering in a gestation crate, I, I think they would hope they would be released soon. <laughs> you know, if you if you harm an animal for long enough and they're suffering, suffering, and then you release them out into a green field and let them free, and then you bring them back into harm, I think they would hope to be out in that green field soon. You, what you're saying is they don't have any memory, they don't have any desires. Like, I think science is on the side of uh, uh, the uh, the complexity of animals' emotional uh, range and their intelligence. I mean. Going up against science there, brother. Sorry, we, we have more questions to get through. Who's next? Okay. Exactly. Right. <laughs> we'll go for the gentleman there in the yellow shirt there. Hello, okay. Sky pink shirt. Um, how would you feel if an alien species came along with a higher sentience than us and more intelligent and more evolved and farmed your mum, you? <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to be fair, generally, generally, yeah, generally when people call my mum a cow, it's in a less roundabout way, but fair enough. Um, <laughs> it's not an insult, cows are beautiful. <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously, in virtue of being a human and knowing my capacity for sentience and knowing the complex levels of emotions that we as humans feel, I would have a definite and um, set uh, series of emotions about it. 
But I, I think, which I believe you're, this is what you're trying to do, you're, to analogise that then to animals, I, I don't think is quite right. Because we've heard um, Joey say, oh, animals can do this, that and the other. They can hope, they can, they can experience love and all this sort of thing. Which I, I'm, I'm not going to deny it right, because I, I obviously don't know the science as well as you. But I think um, that there is uh, uncertain ground there. I think that to completely anthropomorphise the feelings of animals, um, which is, is what any discussion of animal feeling is at the end of the day, um, is, as I said, shaky ground. And so to try and analogise in that way just isn't quite accurate. But if anything, it's a testament actually to human... So, sorry, again, yeah, question and yeah, answer. Human. We have way more That's people fine. to get through. Yeah. Who's next? OK, we'll go for the gentleman here at the front. Hi, uh, my question's for Will. Uh, mm. When Patrick was talking and he was um, describing the lab meat versus meat from an animal, he said that there basically there is no trait difference except sentience. Mm. You turned around and said, I'd still prefer the animal meat. Why would, why would that be when the only uh, trait difference is sentience? Well, uh, admittedly, I mean, I, I think Patrick knows more about um, lab-grown meat than I do. Um, I mean, it was, it was more an off-the-cuff mark with regards to uh, taste. Um, the taste is the same, there's no trait difference. Well, m m maybe, that, maybe that's the case. And in, in, in that case, then, well, fantastic. If, if we can cut down the carbon footprint, then brilliant. Maybe we should welcome lab-grown meats. But um, I, I, I have no experience of them. And just so just from personal experience, I would say I'd go for the... Do we mind if I come in for a moment? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So, um, go for the murder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, if you prefer to go for the murder. So, so let, let's take the total yeah. number of meat eaters in this world, right? You're going to have some, the kind that go fox hunting, who are yeah. never going to convert, right? Yeah, yeah. But there is a group of people who probably want to be vegetarians, but like the taste, and you know, there's probably a tradition there, they grow up meat eaters. And so I'd say that the, the market of people can potentially be moved to lab-grown meat as the product becomes um, far more refined, and more than three companies start making, you know, there was a time when there were only three companies making computers. Um, <laughs> Where, where, that will convert. You will have a bunch of people who will forever, the same reason that some people still hunt elephants and poach tigers now for completely horrendous reasons. But I think that it does open a future for a world where meat remains um, on the menu, but non-murderous. Okay, we'll go for um, Louise. Yeah. I think my question is more for the vegan, because I, I kind of um, understood that you were both vegans, but the debate is on meat, and I don't think that people who don't eat meat are necessarily vegans, because some eat, um, for example, eggs or honey mm -hmm. uh, or milk, um, but for example, um, if there are chickens in a field, and you come across an egg because they lay eggs, you don't eat them, then they make them. If you eat that egg, is that murder? Murder? Of course it's not. If you come across an egg in a field, there's no <laughs> sentience in the egg. To, uh, murder is to rob someone of their sentience, to rob someone of their life. There's no life in a, in a, in a dropped egg. That's like asking if you know, eating a piece of uh, animal feces is murder. I mean, but... but I think uh, using animals as products is inherently immoral. Yeah, that's the problem. Animals are viewed as property, as resources, as egg-laying machines, um, as, you know, uh, slaves, essentially. They're not looked at as, uh, like you so graciously display, they're not looked at like anything more than to step on your boot and use as flesh. I mean, you know, shoot them in the head, treat them like nothing. They can't even be con considered murdered. They can't be considered raped. They can't be, they're not even considered at all. And I think this is a huge problem. They are just they're like, I mean, when you see a chicken, what do you see? An egg laying machine? You know, someone to, what, to walk, like, do you see a bird? Do you see an individual? Do you see an intelligent individual that, that is sentient and, you know, they look after their young, they want to live uh, just like, you know, other animals do? You know, they probably want to live just as much as a, a baby does. I mean, there's traits of intelligence in animals that supersede traits of intelligence in human babies. For, like uh, newly uh, hatched chicks, they can recognise their siblings upon hatching. Something that a human baby can't do. I mean, they display something called object permanence, where if you cover up an object, to a, a, a baby chick, okay? They know that object still exists, even if you cover it up. But a human baby thinks it's disappeared, that's why you can play peekaboo with them, okay? So they display uh, greater uh, intelligence than the human babies. Do they have more moral value then? Or do we have different traits of intelligence and that doesn't determine moral value? Okay, this is a problem. Okay. We'll go for a gentleman here at the front. Um, I'm uh, for this question's for the meat is murder side. Um, I would assume they're against, um, for example, sweets that contain gelatin. Um, 
Would they also, so they would consider like sweets containing gelatin to be murder? Who, who you are addressing, they? Is it vegans? Uh, yeah. Okay. The, the yeah, okay. okay, yeah. Um, would you also extend um, to say organic is murder because organic is fertilized with uh, manure from the animal, animal agriculture? So you would say, what was the gelatin part first? And yeah. then we'll go into the manure part. Would I be right to assume you'd say uh, sweets? That gelatin is murder. Murder by proxy, meaning if, if, if you are funding animal agriculture with gelatin, okay, if, you're, if you are subsidizing their costs, if you're making their costs cheaper and you are funding them, okay, then you are funding uh, a murderous industry. Okay. okay. And the um, add-on to that was, would you, by the same reasoning, say that organic vegetables are murdered because they, they use uh, manure? I would say that that there is a full-on complex topic, okay, but we have to, it is so complex because there's different um, there's different uh, ways they uh, acquire the manure in different countries. But I will say this: if um, organic producers are purchasing huge amounts of blood, bone, organic uh, you know fecal matter off of industry and it's subsidising their costs. Um, and like they would otherwise have to pay to dump um, all of this byproduct. It's not actually a byproduct. If you are paying for the product, it then becomes a product. I think that this is a big issue that needs addressing. Um, secondary to stabbing cows in the neck for burgers. Okay, but it is still an issue. Now I think um, steering towards more synthetic. Um, you know, we, we have we have technology now. You know, we can steer towards synthetic fertilizers that don't harm the environment and that don't. Um, help to subsidize animal agriculture. This is secondary to sticking your fist in a cow's anus uh, to inseminate them for dairy and then slashing their child's throat open and eating their body parts. Um, but I do think it is a moral issue that needs addressing. Sorry for the graphic description. <laughs> just, <laughs> just explaining objective um, reality <laughs> for animals. So are you against animal cruelty? I'm against animal cruelty in so far as um, we are able to effectively retain um, a healthy position of animals in society as I have earlier defined. Because if we, sorry, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you, yeah, go on. Um, Let's go. Do you agree that animal cruelty is the unnecessary, causing an animal unnecessary harm or suffering? Well, I mean, animal cruelty, obviously, it's unlike murder. There's no one um, set term of it and it's set term uh, sort of set definition for it. So you say unnecessary harm and suffering, but equally to, to ask me to make a judgment about that, I mean, what, what is in, in your mind unnecessary harm and suffering? Because we, we may have different so interpretations of it. Uh, if I didn't need it for my health, like yeah. live a, a healthy and yeah. uh, thriving life. Okay, you I, need to eat meat to be healthy. Yeah. And if you agree that you don't need it to be healthy, then are you not guilty of causing... I would say unjustified. I would say unjustified, not unnecessary. Unnecessary is very ambiguous. Unjustified. Um, now, to oppose animal cruelty, right, but to openly pay for, fund, consume animal cruelty is a complete contradiction of your own moral system. And to say that, you know, animals aren't even on the same playing field as us, we can use them, subjugate them and stab them in the throat and it's not even murder, but to be against animal cruelty for some reason, they must have some moral value to you to be opposed to treating them cruelly. Now, whether that's you, you know there's a sentient being in there, in there who avoids pain and suffering and wants to experience well-being. So somewhere deep so inside of you, you know that they have moral value, but for some reason you, you contradict your own moral stance against that. I mean, once again, I think it's a big issue of an, uh, anthropomor uh, anthropomorphizing the issue because um, you talk about oh, cruelty and you're saying oh, cruelty with regards to animals in the same way um, you know, we have cruelty with regards to humans. And I would say, okay, let's say we define uh, cruelty as uh, unnecessary suffering. I would say, yep, sure, I oppose it in the context of um, my other views as to how we should and indeed have a right to use animals. So of course, you know, if we, um, as a meat eater who supports the, the, the um, production of meat and the, the consumption no, of no. meat, um, I, would, I would fully support um, uh, a, a ethical and sort of righteous use of animals that was not, that's not called grievous righteous. harm. Righteous. Righteous. Righteous, define righteous. Sorry, we have a million more questions yeah. to get through. Well, let's open up, the, let's, let's discuss this. What, is, what do you mean well, by righteous talk killing talk of animals? Just, we'll come on to it. Um, lady there has had a hand up for a while. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, well, you kind of seem to think that if we didn't slaughter animals,
animals, they would somehow rise to be more powerful <laughs> and that there's some sort of need to obtain our status by killing them. And if we didn't kill them, the, there would be some sort of role reversal or anarchy and all the cows would start taking our jobs. <laughs> Is that a straw man of your position, or is that your position? <laughs> Carnival's Daily Mail um, is, is what that is, but, uh, <laughs> but no, no, not at all. I mean, my point was, and we're going back to the original motion, because obviously we've, we've strayed at certain times quite far from it, is that if we are to, and what I've said, and I'll say it again, if we are to say that meat is murder, we have to afford animals equal status to humans, mm. and if we afford mm. animals equal status to humans, that's a very dangerous um, I think uh, you use the word radical equality, like yeah. exactly equal to humans in every way. Yeah. Like, no, we're just asking for fundamental rights. Like, one right to be uh, treated as a free being, uh, as in, look, so can we hunt? not as a slave, not as property belonging to someone so else. So it's hunting be... all right, like sort of stalking in the wild? Because if they're no hunting property, is murder. No, I know they're free, but no, so no, I believe no, earlier I'll you said... No, I'll go far to say is hunting is murder. Sure, earlier you said the one fundamental right not to be treated as property. So surely if we abide by that definition you're, and... You're, I, you're I using them for your... Like, th those animals No, no, animals but going back to what you said originally. Forget, forget this. It, one fundamental right, I, so I can hunt animals. Does that not be treated as pro property? Yeah. You can't hunt... No, you can't hunt animals. That's murder. But if you, if you afford animals rights to protect them, okay, yeah. you, you afforded them a right to liberty, okay, bodily right. integrity. So, so you, if you shoot them, big game hunting. If, yeah. I, I think that, that we should have laws that protect animals from being killed, like we do for human beings. Right, but as we've established, that requires a certain equality. Under but not law. radical, not exact equality in every single way, shape so you, and form. you don't want exact Because you don't afford that to, okay. to babies either, human babies. You don't, uh, you don't say, okay, let's get human babies up in parliament to vote and give them a driver's license and let, you know, like that's what you were, that's the, the extremes you're going no, but, to. But they've got animals. fundamental rights, as you said earlier. I mean, you're contradicting your own position here. No, 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 no. Fundamental like and not like the right to vote are two different things. No, but the, the obviously you can say it's reductionist, but that's the kind of logic you're working on, no, and no, that no, logic no, no. simply not, doesn't not add up. Like we right. do with we'll it's okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll no, well that's good. We're, we're chatting this through. We're chatting this through. <laughs> I think hunting an animal without justification is murder. You know, and no. I think if they had laws yeah. protecting him, they'd have be, uh, laws protecting him from people like you that want to kill them. But that's development on your on your idea of oh, they only need one. No, that's right. all they need. Like just a law protecting them their their bodily inte integrity, just the right to. To, to not be used as a product, treated as property, murdered. Like, we have these rights protecting us, human rights. You know, not all humans are, like, um, radically equal, either. You well, know, we're all, but there is, we? there's a radical equality of species. As but, in, you've got, but, you've got but, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Human rights, key word. But what exactly. your, but Human <laughs> supremacist <laughs> rights, where we can, we demand rights ourselves, but we take those rights away from animals. Like, complete yeah, double because, standard. Because we're different. Okay. And I just like to, yeah. this is a Q&A, guys, so right, we have I'll, to move I'll, on. Sorry. Um, this is what it's all question. about, dude. Uh, Kevin. Um, I'd like to present Joey with a purely hypothetical scenario. I'm not going to try and speculate as to how realistic this may or may not be. Okay. But if you imagine yourself in a survival situation, <laughs> where your only thought was a piece of roadkill. So you have no sort of plants nearby. Well, uh, yeah. No, sorry, yeah. I'm not finished. But okay. on the one hand, so you're not actively making the choice in the very fullest sense to eat this because it's your only way to survive. And secondly, it's not been intentionally killed. Yeah. If it's roadkill, would you still consider this murder by proxy? Of course not. You're not paying anyone to stab someone in the throat. Someone's been killed accidentally. If that was a human being's arm on the floor there and that was the only thing I had to eat, I'd probably eat it too. I didn't <laughs> murder by proxy them. There was just someone accidentally got... There's a, there's a difference between... There's a difference between premeditated murder, okay? Paying someone to assassinate someone for you on your behalf and finding someone who's been accidentally run over and eating their body when you're about to die. I mean, where's the moral... Where, like, you know, roadkill... That's the moral loophole. Eat roadkill. They, they don't, like, you can eat, you know, so I, I personally think that to, if, unless you were about to die, it would still be disrespectful. Like, why not just treat them like, you know, someone who has died, move them off the side of the road, maybe, maybe bury them, see if they're still alive, put some leaves over them, you know, like you would. And if, if it was a human being, you'd call the police and say, oh my God, a human being's been you'd run over. Unless you were starving, you'd probably eat their thigh first and... <laughs> Right, we'll have to take another question. 
Um, this is for you. So if you do think it's okay to kill animals because they have a lack of emotional capability, would you be okay with eating your own dog? Uh, well, if I'm going to be logically consistent, yes. And would you feel the same way? <laughs> would you feel the same way? Well, look, I'm all about logical consistency. Fair enough. If I'm going to argue that um, consumption of, anim of animal products is fine, then I, yes, I do also have to say that I'll eat my own dog. Would now, you honestly, but, but the beauty, the, be the beauty of the beauty of free society is that I don't have to if I don't want to. So I probably wouldn't you eat my dog. You don't have to eat meat if you don't want to. Yeah. No, exactly. Great. Well, I'm, you know, as I said you before. I, as I, okay, yeah, let's go yeah, into no, logical fine. consistency. But you wouldn't eat a human being. No, because they right. are, as we've established, different to, and I would argue. What is that difference? Well, the difference you haven't I spelled think, it stems, out yet. Yeah, because it comes down to intuitive morality. And if you're able to give me sort of a, a, an expounding in, I don't know, under intuitive two minutes. Intuitive morality? Meaning yeah. just out of your intuition you don't? Want yeah, to? for the wait, same wait. reason that I think the majority of the world would probably have more of an issue killing a human baby than a chicken. Um, it's that sort of intuitive morality. What is the Pardon? moral difference? Okay, okay. Moral moral difference. You haven't spelled out, that's your own intuitive morality. What is the difference? That, that's, your, that's not being logically consistent. Right there, yeah. because you would you would eat your dog, but you wouldn't eat a human for some for some, from some morally moral intuition. You know, my moral intuition says it's bad to stab cows in the throat for a burger, but you know, in the eyes of a cow and you know a human child, I think that they're both you know on this on a similar degree of sentience and intelligence. And what is the moral? You haven't even spelt out a difference, and this is where it ends. The, the difference. Right. We'll take two more questions, and then we'll have a final vote on the proposition. Okay. So, gentlemen at the back, please. Um, so, uh, are animals hunting other animals uh, murder? Moral agency. Uh, moral agency. Uh, Human uh, beings possess moral agency. Okay, animals in the wild do not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry, yeah. Uh, and then, um, are then humans originally hunted other animals yeah. for their food? When they, we hunted each other and killed and ate each other too. Is that moral? Murder. Well, we hunted each other and ate each other too. Cannibalism in tribes, is that moral? That's murder. But if it's for survival, so you yourself would die? Well, if me and you were on a desert island, I wouldn't murder you to survive either. I don't, I'd, I'd try to like see who died first. <laughs> and I'm vegan, so I'd live longer. <laughs> Right, we'll take one final question and then we'll move to voting. Um, go on, Sam. Um, yeah, um, um, coming back to that argument, um, um, as we talked about um, like, um, uh, uh, keeping like, domestic animals and whatever, um, would you be comfortable um, uh, serving like, um, any of your pets, for example, like a dog or an animal who needed meat, um, meat? Or would you, um, you know, just uh, uh, see who died first or like, try and find some other way? Well, dogs can be super healthy on a plant-based diet that's uh, diet that's formulated. Uh, there's peer-reviewed study on that. Sorry, that you can formulate. You know, like this is what. Um, there's no magical property in meat that you can't synthesize. You know, cats need taurine. They need protein. They need to be monitored. Okay, you don't need to stab other animals in the throat. And people go, oh well, the cats have this. They have a natural diet. Cats aren't naturally occurring animals. They're, they're human selectively bred you know, man-made domesticated animals. Why should we stab uh, a cow in the throat to feed a cat, a house cat? And when is a cat gonna go into the ocean and drag a tuna out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, based on environmental destruction, not even morality, based on environmental destruction alone, you know, meat is destroying the environment. The number one cause of uh, Amazon deforestation, ocean dead zones, water use, land use, and you think your cat has that much moral value that they can contribute to the destruction of the earth? Or if there's peer-reviewed studies and thousands of anecdotes of healthy plant-based cats, wouldn't we choose the formulated pet food for that cat? I mean, and you're not a cat. Do you eat steak? Do you eat steak? Where's your moral justification? We we'll talk about your cat later. <laughs> meat is murder. Uh, that's it now for questions. Um, before we get on to the final vote, um, I'd just like to thank um, everyone uh, for contributing. Um, despite yeah. different arguments, everyone's put forward um, their ideas uh, really well, and it's been a civilised debate. So I think a round of uh, applause is in the. Well done, <laughs> And well done to Will for coming, and I know well done for standing up against because you had a lot of. 
uh, people challenging you, and you did oh, very well. Discussion. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's enjoyable. Uh, um, now we'll move to the final vote. So we'll start with the original proposition, which is uh, meat is murder. Um, so for those in favour of the proposition, please raise your hand. Okay, that's remained similar. Um, and for those uh, who oppose the proposition, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Okay. And for those who abstain, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there have been fewer abstentions by two and three fewer uh, for the opposition. So that means um, there has been a swing um, further in favour of um, the motion, which is meat is murder. Um, and then. As Patrick suggested, I think we should um, vote on the proposition um, animal meat. No, you, there's no need to do that unless you want to, right? Do you want to do the difference? Animal meat is murder versus just meat is murder? Coconut meat or <laughs> cultured meat or plant-based meat? Or what about Beyond Burgers? Yeah. Yeah. I, I advise instead that we give everyone a round of applause for coming. Yeah. Thank you. the people who make these events a success. And I also recommend you get yourself a glass of vegan wine. At the Excellent! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Let's have a party! And enjoy yourselves. Thank you everyone so much for coming. Really well done, man. That was really good. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Good job.